Hello, my name is Linda Gale Arago, and some of your second generation may not remember me. Uh, I'm quite a bit older now, but I was the English voice of the opposition, the democratic movement in Taiwan in 1978 and 79, and especially at the time of the Kaohsiung incident trials in 1980, uh, I was the person who, together with the overseas Taiwanese Americans, uh, exposed the uh, injustices of the Kuomintang regime, who arrested hundreds of people. Okay. Now is 2016. We have undergone a very significant transition. For the second time, the DPP has won the presidential election. But this time it is much more decisive. Uh, Tsai Ing-wen won with 56%, a resounding victory because of the reaction of the populace of Taiwan against President Ma, the Kuomintang's President Ma, seeming to sell out Taiwan to China, doing everything that China wanted, and seeming to move towards recognizing the sovereignty and the rule of China. Now, most people in Taiwan, at least 80%, want their democracy. Whether or not they feel that they are Chinese in a cultural sense or in some long-term sense that they have an identity with Chinese civilization, culture, even politics. But the crucial thing is that Taiwan now has its democracy. The people of Taiwan, with this election, with this election of Tsai Ing-wen, have shown that they are vested with their own sovereignty to elect their own president and Tsai Ing-wen represents that sovereignty. Okay, well, with this background, which I think you all recognize and identify with, I want to tell you something that I'm very, very alarmed about. Uh, a few months ago, I began to think of how to tell the new government that there should be transitional justice in international relations. And since I've been doing human rights work for so many years, I'm very much aware of the way that Taiwan has been an accomplice with the American CIA and with other organizations to support dictatorships in Central America and in South Africa. For example, the relations with the South African white government, with the Taiwan also nationalist government. When all of the world was boycotting South Africa, Taiwan went in and became honorary white citizens. In the 1970s, the Taiwan government was helping to train and support death squads in Central America. So my concern has been for many years, and I've tried to get Taiwanese concerned about what's happening with their tax money, and why are Taiwanese not respected around the world? It's not just because of China, it's because of what the Kuomintang has done. Well, imagine my shock and my surprise when I heard that the new president, Tsai Ing-wen, has allowed the appointment, the uh, preparatory appointment of a long-term Ministry of Foreign Affairs official. One who has been an official since the white terror period to become the head, the new head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay, his name is David Lee. He has had a good career in the uh, MOFA and uh, congratulations to him but he obviously represents the one China position, which has been continuing since 1949, and which is choking Taiwan and facilitating Taiwan's takeover by China. So we always know year in and year out, people are complaining about China blocking Taiwan, blocking Taiwan's international relations because of the one China principle. So where does she come from? Why does she think that she should appoint a person in the Ministry of Foreign Relations who is going to continue this position? This is like a statement to the world that the DPP administration only has the one China position. It's like you're cutting your own throat, cutting your own throat. Now, I, I could hardly believe my ears. I really couldn't believe my ears. And I've also seen signs that a lot of other people are upset. A lot of the people upset, and I don't think they're going to cooperate with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs under these conditions. We should also note that since 1979, when 
the United States recognized the People's Republic of China. It was the Taiwanese Americans, the Formosan Association for Public Affairs, who has taken the initiative to keep up contact with the American Congress, because of course, Congress and the State Department, because of American officials are not allowed to have contact with MOFA. So what good is MOFA? MOFA is almost no good. It has foreign relations with 3% of the world's population. It has choked the voice of the people of Taiwan. So even though I'm invited to Tsai Ing-wen's inauguration, and I'm very pleased to be invited, and I will sit on the stands with the, in the important guest row, that's better than I got before in the Sun Tzu-Ben era, I'll be happy to stand up there on the important guest rolls and support and applaud her inauguration. But at the same time, I will state I am adamantly against this appointment. I believe that it violates the principles of the DPP. It violates the principle of the sovereignty of the people of Taiwan. Tsai Ing-wen's election was an exercise of the sovereignty of the people of Taiwan, not an exercise confirming the Republic of China, which on the Constitution still includes Mongolia, all of China and Mongolia. It's ridiculous. It's not just out of date, it's ridiculous. MOFA is ridiculous as it stands. It calls for a huge overhaul. It calls for a total change in direction. Okay, and you know, even though Tsai Ing-wen has done the best she can to please Washington, this is going way overboard. The Congressional uh, Committee on Foreign Relations has just stated six points, and I think you have to look up these six points, and basically it confirms that the United States will not pressure Taiwan to negotiate with Beijing, and it will not force Taiwan to recognize the control or rule by Beijing. Taiwan has a lot of room, even under these constraints that are often stated by Washington. Taiwan has enough room to state, we are Taiwan, we are not Republic of China. And this is not just a responsibility of the administration, it's the responsibility of organizations and people in the society. And I'm waiting for them to talk. I want to say, if they're playing games, if they're going to stand up for their ideals, or do they, are they just a lot of hot air? Uh, are they waiting to get money handouts from the government so they won't say anything? If Tsai Ing-wen is in a middle position, there must be voices in the society that represent Taiwan's sovereignty and will stand up for Taiwan's right to its own self-determination. So uh, there's no time to be helpless. There's no time to be passive. This is the time to make a statement. And Taiwan independence organizations that do not make a statement will lose all respect in my eyes. Uh, maybe that's enough for me to say for now. I would expect FAPA should also make a statement of its position. Okay, so thank you very much to LATWTV, Chen Feng Gong Si. Okay, thank you. <laughs>